Okay, we're going to go ahead and get uh, started with our uh, next session. And uh, I'm going to be uh, speaking uh, about lessons learned from the release process for uh, Transmart versions 1.1 and 1.2. <laughs> so, um, one way to look at the releases in terms of a perspective, not from a platform perspective, but uh, from a process perspective, is, is that these releases have been a distributed set of community activities. These activities have involved scientists, developers, testers, and others to really um, drive the, the um, enhancements that um, are now incorporated uh, into the Transmart platform. And these contributions have come from organizations that are academic in nature, um, the pharmaceutical or biotech company, nonprofits, as well as service providers. Another perspective, uh, particularly on version 1.2, the latest release of the platform, is that it is a set of code contributions coming from 10 plus organizations, data set contributions that have come from um, eight or more organizations. Oftentimes, uh, these code and data set contributions have come from the same organizations like Pfizer, like Sanofi. And when you look at it, the 1.2 release process overall going back to uh, November of last year in the Paris meeting, when you look at all the activity that has occurred over the last several months, we look at a volunteer effort of more than 100 individuals. And so this community effort has been involved in platform development, testing, and now documentation and training. <coughs> This slide, I think everybody has probably seen at some point over the last uh, uh, day, where back in November, uh, features were prioritized. A set of foundation uh, sponsored and led activities uh, occurred in the February through August time frame with two hackathons occurring in February and April, two testathons conducted virtually in the June time frame, and then ongoing community-wide testing and debugging during July and, and August. So these are a couple of different ways that you could look at 1.2 and the release process. So what I want to do is, is look at the release process in terms of challenges, lessons learned, and, and then engage in a discussion around uh, process recommendations. And not so much from a, a deeply technical perspective, but how we bring the community together around a common set of goals and, and how collectively we can do something more than what any of us would be able to achieve um, on our own. So, in looking at the many challenges that there have been around the version 1.2 release and the associated activities, they can be categorized in a number of different ways. If you look at goals and objectives, certainly one of the challenges that, from my perspective, we as a community have had is to define discrete and achievable objectives for development and, and testing phases. So this was very much a phase set of activities. And, and this required input and consensus from, from developers who are, contrib have contributed and integrated a lot of the enhancements that are now part of 1.2. It required input and consensus from testers and then also from leadership, not only from within the foundation, but more importantly, from the organizations where developers, testers, and, and others have um, uh, actually work uh, day to day and, and have contributed to, to the 1.2 release. Another area in terms of challenges as we look back over a set of activities that span nearly a year 
is around sustained commitments and prioritization. Again, this has been a volunteer effort. Many of the individuals involved in the 1.2 release have also had responsibilities within their organization around their business-driven driven commitments. And so whether we look at some of the service providers like the Hive or Converge Health or some of the or other organizations, um, that has, has impacted uh, timelines. And, and it, it's, it, it's not a, um, it's, it's not a criticism of organizations or, or the individuals that were involved in that effort. It's just something that I think we need to acknowledge that as, as an open source community that we need to, to think about in terms of our planning. In terms of platform and data dependencies, I, I think we've seen those who, who've been very close to the 1.2 uh, release process is that many enhancements require data and metadata to function properly and as a consequence during the release process, particularly going back to the activities that occurred in the June-July time frame, there were issues that were identified that required investigation. Is this a code issue? Is this a data issue? Is this an issue where um, uh, both uh, code and, and data uh, impact what a particular tester is, is reporting. And then the sort of the last um, uh, challenge area that, that I at least want to touch on, and again by this is by no means comprehensive, it just represents uh, one perspective, is around communications. So this has been truly a global virtual collaboration spanning multiple time zones. We've had um, volunteers either uh, supporting the development effort, the testing effort, um, helping to support some of the infrastructure that has enabled the, the 1.2 release to occur, where we've had individuals that um, are based in India, based in different parts of Europe, as well as the east and west coasts of the United States. And so that is something, too, that poses certain challenges. And I, I personally believe we've done a fairly decent job of, of addressing. But you know, as part of this, this has required a, a need for both asynchronous and, and synchronous interaction and information sharing. In addition, in terms of, of complexity and challenges, um, what I call cultural nuances, um, and as we went through the release process, depending upon what your perspective is, if you're a developer, if you're a scientist, if you're a bioinformatician, if you're involved in documentation and training and, and so forth, uh, th there are, are differences there that, that certainly uh, impacted, I think, some of the communication that went on. And so those, those, I think, represent, in many ways, from my perspective, uh, the challenges that, that we saw during the, the uh, 10 to 12 month uh, process of, of around 1.2. So, so some of the, the lessons learned that, uh, at least from my perspective, uh, I think came out of this process and, and I think can contribute to a discussion about what we can do moving forward with a with 1.3, with, with, with ongoing uh, community collaboration and enhancement of the platform, is that uh, through this whole process, a lot of the, the work uh, that occurred uh, uh, happened on a global virtual basis. But one of the things that the foundation was able to do um, through support of Sanofi and, and through others was to um, actually organize some key face-to-face -face working meetings during, the, um, during the, the release process. And so those um, are enumerated on one of the earlier slides and, and have evolved uh, hackathons and testathons. And as we went through this process, there, there was a need to sort of evaluate where we were in terms of, of achieving our overall goals and objectives and a need for periodic reset. 
looking at sustained commitments and prioritization. Again, uh, you know, the, really the goal, at least from the foundation perspective, was to empower the community, the developers, testers, others involved in the release process. And one of the key things, at least from a sustained commitment and prioritization uh, perspective that, that certain foundation focused on, was to make sure that we had the support and the engagement of leadership from, from the um, volunteer organizations. So as an example, we worked very closely with Jay uh, at Pfizer. We worked very closely with Sh Sherry from Sanofi. Worked very closely with Case from the Hive to make sure that um, um, that we had their support and and uh, involvement of key personnel in, in bringing this forward. In terms of platform and data dependencies, I already touched on this, but be, because I, I think many many issues that surfaced during the the May to July time frame. Um, issues really require close, close collaboration among developers and testers to really understand whether the particular issue that was a result of bringing uh, about a dozen different uh, code branches together was a code issue, uh, a data issue, or in some cases both code and, and data. And so it, it really did require um, a lot of close collaboration. So. You know, two examples that, that are very keen in my mind um, um, are around the, the cross-trials functionality where um, we had the Hive, we had Lloyd, and we had others working very closely to, to address the issues that were, that, that were reported and, and ultimately resolved through a lot of dedicated effort. Similarly, I think we would GWAS and some of the capabilities developed at Pfizer, whether we were looking at the Oracle or the Postgres implementation of 1.2. Again, uh, we had uh, issues that were either code-related, data-related, and in some cases both. And, and again, through, I, I think, strong communication, uh, uh, key interactions from a, a lightweight project management point of view, we were able to, to sort of address those Communications, um, again, as a, a virtual global activity, uh, communication is, is key to helping uh, keep things moving forward. And so uh, a single web-based source of information related to, the re related to the release process, I think, uh, was very key. And so we used the Transmount Foundation Wiki for that, and we used foundation resources to keep that uh, up to date as a single uh, point of truth during the, the um, multi-month process. And then certainly from a developer point of view and from a testing point of view, uh, the, the group chat and instant messaging capabilities that um, um, PipChat provides was, was I, I think, uh, a, a, a key factor in, in helping with that. And then just as I said with the, the uh, periodic face-to-face -face meetings, that, that really were the, the um, hackathons and testathons as we got closer to the, the August uh, uh, release date and as we worked through May and June, we had, in some cases, daily stand-up calls and then it went to semi-monthly. And, and so uh, the key point here is, is that uh, communications, when, when you're doing this kind of activity, is, is really instrumental. From a foundation value-added perspective, I think the things that the foundation was able to do to really help enable the 1.2 release was, was to really provide some project management, not heavy-handed, but more lightweight in nature, that really was intended to guide, to coalesce, to coordinate efforts. So this was not a strong-arm uh, project management activity. And then, as I think I said earlier, to work with organizations uh, to really provide the sustained resources to make sure that we had the developers, that we had the testers, that we had other infrastructure to really deliver on the project. And then um, from, from a communications point of view, help, help to facilitate that. I think the other, the other thing that uh, the foundation um, has provided to the community is, is really uh, 
a provisioning of common infrastructure. So um, that really can be categorized in three three areas: sort of development and, and release uh, tools, uh, the testing infrastructure, and and communications infrastructure. So with that, I, I just want to go back and say that this has truly been a community effort. The foundation has put resources into helping to facilitate, guide that community effort. And there's an opportunity here, I think, for us collectively to define best practices. And so instead of trying to proscriptively articulate a, a set of process recommendations, what, what I would like to do on the FLF is just open up a, a, a conversation, a dialogue um, about um, uh, your um, uh, sort of perspective on the 1.2 news process. As I look around the room, there are a number of individuals that have been very involved in the 1.2 release activity. There are others who were not involved or maybe not closely uh, uh, involved in, in that process. So um, I'd like to open these up for, for questions and comments and dialogue. So what is one thing that we should be doing with the NRL and how we deal with the frustration is not to be changed for the value? So I'm going to point to two things. I think communication, and I think we, we put a lot of energy in, into communication at multiple levels. <clears throat> and then working with the community and the various organizations that were contributing resources to the release process to make sure that we could coordinate resources at the right time, acknowledging that the organizations that, that contributed to the process had other business-driven um, <clears throat> obligations that those same resources had to to contribute to. So I think what, what we need is as we go forward and as we think about what 1.3 or maybe some of the enhancements to 1.2 is, is to sort of uh, think about um, how we could um, perhaps do that better. And, and I'm, I'm not sure necessarily what the answers are. I think part of that is going back to to organizations and, and really working with them to remind them how important it is to be able to provide those resources on a sustained basis. So Lucian, if I could pick on you, you were you were one of the key developers around 1.2 and uh, obviously uh, you had many things going on at the high. Um, you were very involved in the data stand-ups, very involved in, in some of the bug fixes. From your perspective, any general comments about how the process went? Um, are there things that the foundation could have done that in hindsight perhaps we didn't do? Or are there things that you thought we did particularly well? I worked uh, uh, together with the people rights, uh, mostly on the story. So, I think uh, we can have a communication and a regular, uh, it was nice to have a regular uh, meeting. Uh, uh, so, yeah, this is this one that is nice. Sure, how, how we could do that. 
get more people into the code. And so I showed also a presentation that Core API and Core is the and we're working uh, I mean, uh, just a week that I was working on that and it would be nice to uh, other people also share the same ideas with Core API because without uh, sharing this I think doesn't have a future. Right. right. So I, I think you know we could have had a very prolonged conversation on on on, on you know, development best practices, architecture, you know, how we might like to see the, the platform uh, evolve. And, and I think the work that that Jay and EK working in the code committee and so forth will, will address. And you know I, I think to the foundation will certainly work with support, but. Uh, um, yes, I, I acknowledge that, that, that there, there are real opportunities there, and as as we make the code base better, then, then it, it should help facilitate some of these things for sure. And also, uh, first of all, for me, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, we were in the school, that's, that's fine. But uh, for many developers, if they uh, do not have a way of going from it to the ground, to like uh, Egyptian uh, aerobic band or like uh, some of the script that you uh, you do not know the idea behind uh, behind this code. Well, so I think it would be also nice to communicate not just to developers but get inside from people who really use software. And I, I think when we go back to the one dot two activities, I think that was one of the things that I think I was trying to do retrospectively was to go back and particularly as we were thinking about testing and test scripts and so forth is to make sure that we at least at a high level documented what the scientific workflow that particular uh, uh, enhancement flow was intended to enable in terms of overall transfer functionality. But yes, I, I think that that is is crucial. So Jay, if I could turn things around, you asked ask me from my perspective as, as a contributor to 1.2 and as a consumer of the Transmart platform and thinking about the value that the foundation uh, can provide to this kind of community activity. What are your thoughts or, or comments or, or suggestions? We need to make sure that the development is So we need back 